Hello and thank you for joining me everyone. This is Dreas and today I'm going to be checking out the luxury edition of Cuboid Outposts, a Minecraft mod for Minecraft 1.20.1. You can see the versions numbers down in the bottom left. Uh, it's got a good bit of mum, number of mods in it. Uh, main reason I want to play it is just to uh, step through the quest book. It's uh, got a pretty big, decent size quest book in it, and it's different than what you're used to in a Minecraft. So I want to check it out and see what I think of it. I'll just name it Cuboy YT. I'm going to put it on easy for now. We'll start with a little cheat chest. Or, oh, that's cheats. Uh, I may want that on for something. Never know. A bonus chest on. That's what I was referring to earlier. We're just going to leave a blank seed. Let it pick what it picks. I usually keep inventory on death. And... Uh, Mob griefing, I turn off. The wandering traders, I don't want on. And I don't want fire to spread. I don't think any of that's really gonna matter on this one. But uh, yeah, let's get our world created and see what we got. Alright, here we go. Uh, let's read our little book here. <laughs> the beginning of the end. <laughs> Good day to you. I hope this missive finds you well. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to thank you for all your hard and exemplary work that you have done for the corporation over the years out there in Outpost 42. You have our sincere thanks and eternal gratitude. Well, maybe not quite eternal. You see, our scientific division here at the Keyboard Coy Corp have made a little bit of a mistake. Somehow they managed to quantum entangle not two, but three singularities at once. At first, this felt like an amazing technological and scientific progress, but when they put them straight into one of our teleporter arrays, well, that's when it happened. Um, guess we're done with that one. The short version. So anyway, here's the short version. A chain reaction started. We can't control it. We've literally got a few more minutes before our entire communication network shuts down and shortly thereafter, life as we know it on our home planet becomes to a brutal, fiery, apocalyptic end. Oops. So there's no way for us to retrieve you. No way for us to connect you with other outposts and only theories as to what might happen next. Sorry. What we can do, however, is try to give you the best possible chance at survival. Alright, next. Uh, the good news. On the brighter side, your outpost is amazingly well equipped, as you well know. There's the latest in luxurious equipment, including, but not limited to, renewable power in the form of both solar and wind generators. A fridge to keep your ration packs fresh, top-of-the-line technology, the latest in digital storage, and the corporation has that the corporation has to offer. A bed, all the water you can melt, practically, some, somewhere warm to protect you from the elements. Life is good. Right, we're going to get some uh, ration packs. Now in surprise flavor. It's a surprise it has any flavor. All right, well. Good news there. Let's get our ration packs. All right. The new reality. The bad news. Unfortunately for you, life is going to get a lot more complicated. For example, the planet you're on has no natural plant life. In fact, it's completely barren. No native animal life either, and limited natural resources. To make matters worse, we're not going to be able to offer much assistance. We can and will release care packages for you upon completion of certain tasks, which will be made available to you at the appropriate time. Don't worry, though. You'll want to complete them. After all, your very survival will depend on it. 
We're not in Kansas anymore. The really bad news. Unfortunately, there are a few other points to be aware of. The uh, accident seems to have made it possible for undesirable life forms to materialize through the universe. We call them mobs. There seem to be a wide variety of them, but every cloud has a silver lining. Even mushroom clouds. <laughs> they could prove to be an invaluable proved to be an invaluable as a source of new materials, even food. So it's actually good news. Yay. I'm sure you'll be grateful for small mercies, so you'll be glad to hear that our science division has managed to cobble together a gadget that will reduce the need to sleep and make your naps feel a lot shorter. Simply equip it, and over time your need to sleep will be reduced as the sleep charm attunes itself to your genetic code. Now, let's get ready to start your new life by ripping up your old one. Uh, sleep charm. Dark utilities, okay. We have a sleep charm. Okay, well, let's uh, see what that's all about. Uh, is that the charm slot? That is. Alright, well, let's see what that does. All right, well, before we move any further, let's uh, step indoors here. Have automatic doors. We have a magma crucible. We have a snowball. Huh? Okay. Not completely sure what's going on here. Maybe we got to do something first. That appears there's oh, there's no snowballs in there. That's it's locked. All right. So let's look at our quest book again. And let's click our check marks. Uh, step and task info optional. Making the most of the survival guide. All right. Step slash task with a gear shape are typically either the start of a particular chapter or a link to another chapter. In other words, you will usually want to try and open up all gears if your aim is to get access to all chapters. Step last task with a square shape are part of the main survival guide requirements. If your aim is to progress through this pack and skip some of the less critical items, you can focus on completing the square task first. Steps and tasks with a circle shape are just usually either totally optional or just not critical to your continued existence. While this is the intent, it may not be possible that this does not always hold true, but it hopefully gives you a bit of an idea how, of how to approach things. Chapter completed. Making the most of this survival guide. We're not charading here. This survival guide has been lovingly crafted, even if mainly out of guilt, to help you make a new life for yourself in this barren and somewhat inhospitable land you're stranded in. The first thing to note is that it's important to read what we've written. Yes, we do waffle on a bit, but there's usually a point to it. If you skim through, you might miss an important bit of information and die of a cold, lonely, horrible death. The choice is yours, though. Some tasks have fairly long explanations and even hints in them. You might need to scroll down to see it all. To complete a step, you'll need to complete the listed tasks. This survival guide will automatically attempt to recognize when you have completed something, but it's attuned to you. So ensure you hold the item in your inventory for it to be automatically recognized. If you're wondering why a particular step is grayed out, and unavailable to you, there is a little back arrow in the task box. If you open that up, you'll see a list of other steps you will need to complete first. You can select one from that list to be taken to the step in the guide. This is the little back arrow we mean right there. Okay. Well, that's done. Just like that's done. And then I guess we move on to a new life. Holy shit. Oh, there's a new focus. Getting started. Oh! Uh, where we start at, right here? 
breaking it down for you. It's all in the preparation. <laughs> With the distinct lack of resources available to you, the only way forward is to find a way to recycle some of what you have now into something more useful. We're going to have to be very methodical and careful along the way. And to be frank, we might not have thought through all the ways of achieving things. So sometimes we'll have a lot of guidance for you, and other times you'll have to use your own initiative to figure out how to achieve some goals. To begin with, though, what's left of our scientific division has managed to pull together a plan for how to get you started. Trust in the process, follow the advice, and it will all work out in the end. Probably. Before we get stuck into that, though, we'll need to make use of some of the locally available materials. So here's your iron pickaxe. Yay. Ha-ho, ha-ho. It's not so good. The planet you... Your own seems to have a thick crust of fairly weak material, and due to the minimal tectonics, it is a fairly thick and even top layer. Head out into the snow, grab a shovel in the ME system, grab your pickaxe and go mine some of it up. You should be able to combine some of what you collect into chunks, ready for further processing. Okay, so we gotta go get... I guess some of these pieces and make 16 chunks is our first step. So it wants me to get something out of the ME system. Well, we got some snowballs in here. And we have a shovel. Uh, let's put our meals down here. And snowballs went in there. Oh. And it turned, and the magnum crucible turned them into water. So we got four buckets of water in there. Oh, I forgot all about our little starter chest. Got some torches. Uh, it's fixing to get dark. Let's kind of, uh, was a little slow on that. I'll take a little bit lit up. Right, let's see if we can get some of that. Was there a bed in here to sleep in? There is. Oh, there's even a chest in here. Respawn set. Sweet dreams achievement. Counter. Oh, there's a kitchen drawer. What we got here? Pulverizer, redstone furnace, central fuse. So that's a furnace. Okay. It says for smelting ores. Holy shit! Did I not turn mob destruction off? Alright. Be right back. All right, let's see. Where do we want to start mining at? Let's come out this way. Let's go. Let's go out here. I'm going to use my little stone shovel first. Oh, oh, this thing. Oh, five. So let's use the stone one up. I'm just going to go down. Try to keep an eye on the darkness and see if we can stop the zombies from spawning in on us for a little bit anyway. Four and five. Uh, how many of these have we got? Gonna need more than that, aren't we? Yep. Seven. Shows us in the ocean biome. Getting other stuff. One, 
two, three, four. Go one more. Put our torch there. Alright, let's see. What do we got? Oh, yeah, that should be more than enough to do 16. Just do them all up for now. Alright, let's get out of this hole and inside. Alright, let's look at our little book. The planet you're on seems to have. Okay, we read that. Right, so, the next thing. Beggars can't be choosers. You might not have noticed. You might not. You might have noticed by now that nights can be pretty scary. Those mobs, as we're calling them, seem to appear in droves after sunset. Be careful out there. On the plus side, it seems that some of them are affected by the natural radiation produced by the local sun, and some, but not all, of them perish in the sunlight. Even better, some of them leave behind some useful things. You might want to make it a habit to head out in the mornings and pick up some of what's left behind. If you're really lucky, you, may, you might even find some sort of meat product that could perhaps sustain you until we get better food supply sorted out. Okay. Turkey fried spider eye. Make a meal from those bones. Alright, and this, now that you have some chunks, you can make some metallic ingots. You can just pop the chunks straight into the furnace, but it's a little bit wasteful. If you pulverize them first, you can get more of the metallic material in dust form, which can then be smelted to effectively doubling your output. Alright, so pulverize them first. What's it look like outside? Here's our bed in here, by the way. Can only sleep at night or during thunderstorms. And we got everything, but I thought I got them snowballs out. Suppose we could. It's more water in here. I don't know why. This is, uh... Unlimited supply of water right there. Here's our fridge. Put our apples in there for now. We'll put the rest of these snowballs. Probably make blocks out of them. For whatever reason we may want to. Alright. It's not going to feed it over into the furnace automatically. That may be a good thing though. Let's get our first set of ingots. this gonna do it's gonna break stuff down into other usable stuff invar blend Mostly dies. Mostly. Need what? A uh, couple more. them going all right let's go ahead and get this one checked now that you have some chunks you can make the metallic ingots all right we've done that 
So now we need to go the route of... We'll need a bucket. Because if there wasn't, I wouldn't be able to fill it up. You can make a bucket from any of the ingots you've made so far. The bucket itself will, for some unexplained reason, look and behave exactly like a bucket made from iron. But it isn't iron, honestly. <laughs> It seems that the carbon deposits can be crafted together into coal, which is quite useful, really. If you make some rods out of those not so goodium ingots, you should be able to make torches. And once you have those, making lanterns should be simple enough, too. Until now, having decent lighting at night wasn't important, but since we now seem to have mobs taking over when it's dark, lighting up the place a bit might not be a bad idea. Alright, so they want us to make a rod and a lantern. And a lantern is nuggets around torch surrounded by nuggets and that's just two ingots up and down uh, we can do this real quick and some nuggets and we don't really have a crafting station but we do have this on the ME terminal which should work just fine that's that Let's go ahead and make some of this in the coal. Let's put that up. That up for now. We'll put the snowballs in here. Alright, there's a lantern. Let's make some torches as well. Not sure why they had us made a rod, but maybe they'll tell us. Gonna give us some torches and some lanterns. Is it nighttime yet? There are guys out there. Let's uh, get the night slip away. I see a little bitty running turd over there. There's an eye. None of these assholes gonna drop anything. Oh, there's some gunpowder or something. Uh, zombie flesh. What about some bones? Some bones would be nice. I know I saw a couple of skeletons. There's some arrows. Oh, come on now. Oh, there's bone. Should complete one of them. Let's see if we can't get this guy. Alright. Go back inside where it's safe real quick. Well, I mean, it's kind of safe out here for now, but. Alright, so. We've got that done. What do we need here? Turns out the cooking spider eyes reduces their toxicity and more importantly improves their taste. Make yourself from bone meal and from. 
we can then make a meal from it. All right, so let's cook a spider eye. We got one. A rack nugget. <laughs> no, let's not eat it yet. Uh, and make some bone meal out of our one bone. All right. And then we can make broth out of a bowl, bucket of water, and some bone meal. All right, so we need the bowl first, which is three ingots gives us three bowls. And do we not make a bucket? Oh, we haven't done this yet, have we? Oh, wow. Recipe for the bucket is a little bit more expensive and different, isn't it? Give me a bucket, and I'll show you a bucket. All right, so that's done. We just need to make us some broth. kitchen sink is not filling up so maybe it's not like how I thought so let's put that back let's get it out of here we can fill that up with snowballs all right from here I'm gonna make us some broth this What was this broth? Bone meal, water. I was just looking at it and I done forgot. It's broth. What in the spider eye was it? Come on now. You just looked at it. A bowl, you dummy. I don't know why I'm looking now. You know it's a bowl. We'll just do it this way because why not? Da -da -da -da. You made broth. All right, no rewards, but you made it. All right, now I need a sword. And a suit of armor. Alright, let's eat this broth first. I may even eat this arachnid. Let me. Alright. All right, let's put this stuff in here. For now. Keep the bucket on me. And take one of them. We're going to need some sticks. And here's our sword. And we'll make the chest piece first. I'm not going to have enough for everything, I don't think. Nope. Uh, let's make the ham. We're going to need, what, three more pieces for the boots? And we'll, might as well go ahead and grab that out. Keep it in my inventory for now. 
All right, we don't have, well, we do have some more. All right, let's get that going. That'll be enough. Get the silica dust. Put it in the AE system for now. Get us some more torches made. Uh, do we need to hang a lantern in here? We got plenty of lights in here. Do we have any lighting outside? Not really, do we? Probably not going to do much good that high up. Oh well. Little pig, let me in. All right, get some boots. I'm not going to do it right there. There's our boots. What kind of storage do we got? 4K, 63 items. for that one hammer time you might have noticed that we're going to need a lot more materials luckily there's an ancient manual device specifically designed for smashing through large areas of rock at a fairly rapid pace grab some of those not so goodium ingots make some rods and blocks and make yourself your first smasher need two blocks and one whoa Okay, you ain't getting two rods. Alright, well I have one rod already. Gonna need some more ore for some blocks. Is that is that just enough? Did I get that lucky? And thought I had another rod. Oh, let's get rid of that W. And two sticks. Really the, no, not sticks, you dummy. The two rods. The one leftover ingot. Wow. Just wow. All right, no rewards for that. Uh, quantum singularities, what could go wrong? Well, don't panic. We're fairly certain that the singularities produced by the quantum collapser won't result in another uncontrollable feedback loop that destroys your local reality too. It's not like you have a choice anyway. We're going to have to try something to kickstart life as we know it. So grab some materials, make a few necessary ingredients, and build yourself a not so goodium quantum collapser. Note, if you pick up a quantum collapser, it will lose its current progress. Uh, basically reset. Furnace, not so goodium furnace, and a not so goodium quantum coll collapser. Which basically takes the furnace, which takes the... yeah. Oi, got ya. So we're going to need lots of that. We're not so good here, basically. So we're going to need some blocks, a few ingots, and silica dust, cobblestone, probably chunks of the ore. The not so good here. Who knows what else we may find? It is nighttime. Let's uh, get it back today. This guy got a backpack. Hey, buddy. Yeah. 
He didn't drop the backpack, did he? He did not drop the backpack. That's all right. It was worth a try. Uh, these guys wasted away and dropped their stuff. Oh, well. Alright, let's, uh... Head on down. I don't want to do this as well as I go. Yes, one, two, three. There's five. Go ahead and put these right here for now. We'll get a bit more. We're going to need a lot. All right, we've got a good bit here. I think shift clicking up there, so we gotta manually move it. All right, let's just go with that. Let's. Go ahead and turn what we can of this in the coal. Oh, let's see that. All right, we got coal, we got some, uh, the nuggets or ore or whatever that hammer's almost gone. Let's get up here and get some of it smelted in ingots. After we pulverize it. Alright, we're back. And we've got uh, some ingots made up. Hopefully it's enough to kind of get us where we need to be. I know we're going to need this furnace. I've already got the little chunks in here and the silica dust to make that. Get rid of that. 
And then we need to take this furnace. And on four sides, we get the not so good in furnace. And then we're going to need eight blocks of this. And that needs to surround the not so good in furnace to give us the not so good in quantum collapser. And did I put that in my inventory? The I probably messed up. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so we got that done. Let's see. Efficiency isn't everything. Introducing the smusher. It looks a bit like the a smasher, but its purpose is not to break rocks, but to rather to smush chunks into dust. You could, of course, keep using your pulverizer, which costs nothing more than a bit of energy to double your output. The smusher uses some resources to make and has some durability, but then gives you a much faster way of achieving the same result. Make a few old school furnaces and you'll be able to produce ingots at a quicker rate. Okay. Uh, so if we make a smusher craft with ore or a chunk for two dust. Oh, okay, if we make one of these. Rocket cellulose, okay, that works too. We'll get a free furnace, which is... Suppose that's alright. Do we have the stuff to make? one of those got more yeah we got more ore to put in here we mined up a good bit so we're gonna need two more blocks and two rods And the ingot. Is that right? There's our smusher. Alright. And that should give us a not so good EM furnace. Which we can take. And I guess throw it on the ground, evidently. We could place this somewhere. About right here. And does this take coal to just melt this dust down faster? Alright. Well, I'm not really overly concerned about that right at this point. Alright. They do want us to make a basic storage chest. Alright. Probably for some automation, maybe. Basic storage chest. see what does that say when it comes to automation in the past we would just suggest it using your me system and would have sent over the necessary peripherals unfortunately that's no longer an option what you can do however is turn to some more primitive yet still effective methods of storage and item transfer the first step will be to make yourself some kind of chest from the local materials slow enough to drive you hopping mad okay so it's not quite a logistical transport pipe but at least it works now you can make a chest you can also make a hopper yep hop anopolis hopper or some wood i don't have wood so i guess we're just making a good old-fashioned hopper rooney just like that. Hop to it. Alright, we have the hopper. Task. This could take a while. It'll be worth it in the end. Quantum singularities are a bit of a pain to make initially, but will significantly improve your quality of life in the near future. 
put in the effort now and start the process of making some. Note that the collapser doesn't need power and you can offer inputs into the top and extract them from any other side. You can also manually insert items straight into the collapser in its user interface. For now we recommend at least making one from 220 not so goodium ingots. 320 not so goodium ingots. If you pick up a quantum collapser, it will lose its current process progress. Okay, so what they're saying is I need to put this thing down, maybe. And it'll take input from the top. Let's make sure it's going straight in. And let's get a stack of 64 at first. Make sure this is going. One more ingot. And these in here. And it's just going to come consume them and fill this up we need 320 ingots well obviously we're not going to get 320 ingots that's going to give us what 128 roughly and we're going to have to mine some more what was the purpose oh okay that gives us the dust quicker okay all right so we're going to end this episode right here when we come back uh i'll have enough to get this finished off i may run it up to like the next to the last ingot and we'll finish it off and pick up from here when i get back in the next episode in between i'm just gonna mine up and make me some ingots I uh, appreciate everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed. Pretty interesting pack so far. I'm kind of interested to see where it goes. As you can see, there is a lot to do in here. And it's, you just kind of step through it, I think. So no jumping around and picking your what. It's pretty directed and straightforward. I'm sure you can do some jumping around, but my intent is to follow it straight through as much as I can if i uh intend to stick with it it look, looks like a wheel but uh you know let me know what y'all think in the comments but for now y'all take care and we'll see you in the next one bye for now